All right, so I made a duplicate using Command J of the background layer, and then I moved that background layer up to the top, that duplicate, and I took its opacity down to 20. And it shows me right away, yes, I got the chin strap right on the top, but not on the bottom, right? So it's, it can be nice to have that. And then I can go to that chin strap layer. Uh, and I can work with it, kind of push and pull it using warp. And we just do a lot of adjusting. The thing about those high Renaissance painters is it's all very precise and delicate. And that's what I'm learning from this source material. While I'm there, I can also revisit this shape. Maybe be a little bit more precise and delicate with just this bottom edge. Without letting perfectionism just kind of ruin everything. You can even work on this hairline a little bit because now I have that semi-transparent you know, low opacity overlay of it, I can see the edges much more clearly. Now, sometimes I'm not going to be able to get it right with the shape. Like, I'm not going to be able to get that curve in there. So instead, I might have to come up with a more creative solution to get the perfect shape. And I'll show you what that is. So remember, we're using solid color. So think what you would do with paper cutouts. So what I can do is I can use that exact same tone of this. I can make a new ellipse right, with that exact same tone. And I can rotate it, and I can just overlap it in. I can hit return and see how that's pretty close, but not exactly right. And then I'm going to use warp to fine tune it. Kind of curve it up and curve it down. These subtleties in the Leonardo. And then if I turn off that top layer, right, you can see how I can get the hairline to show up. Same thing for the skin tone there. I can build a new ellipse, move it up above, rotate it, Transform it in, soften it, so it kind of transitions in. And I get her hairline. Then I have the little cutout here in her skull. And I can turn the black on and add a new shape. I'll do an ellipse again. Lots of curves in Leonardo. And I'm going to do it with solid black. Transform it. Bring it in. Then warp it. To kind of reveal and cut out that shape. Oh, 
I have to do this a few different ways. There we go. And this is a lot of what working with uh, vectors is like. Kind of pushing and pulling the edges. Going for the subtlety. And then I can duplicate that, Command J, flip it, and use that to get the cheekbone defined. Because again, there's a lot of similar curves used by this artist. And because they're the exact same tone, you don't know that there's multiple shapes making that. Right, next, I'll do Let's see, maybe a big oval for this blue arm. I'm just going to pick a random color for now just so I can see it. Use Command T. And pinch off that corner. I'm mostly interested in this outside shape of it. Now the reason I started with the head is because the head is the focal point of the composition. So those are the shapes I really need to get right. These other ones, I can be a little bit off on. And it won't hurt the composition as much. So the shoulders, this is a pretty important shape. A different color. Remember, I can steal that color. Let's warp. And I need the neck. So I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Just put in the neck. But I can then move that layer down below the other layers. So remember, if these are stacks of paper, you get to move the stacks up and down. So one shortcut, instead of uh, grabbing it, by like clicking and holding and dragging it down below other layers, is to use Command left bracket to move it down through your layers, and Command right bracket to move it up through your layers. So very helpful, and it's, it's nice and close to the Command minus and Command plus. So it's pretty convenient. But I'm noticing there's a slight curve to it, so I'm also going to transform it and give it a slight warp. Might have overdone it there. Give a little grace to that neck. That looks about right. So far, so good. Now the blue, I want to go over the top. And then I might want to revisit its edge here. Or I might have to do that trick where I match this tone 
the new shape. That I then rotate and warp. cut out from that blue sleeve. I need to make sure it's on top of the blue sleeve. All right. Like so. Next, I'm going to do this kind of yellow triangle. I haven't done triangle yet, so I go to the polygon tool. I choose three sides, and I draw a triangle. And then I got to do a lot with transforming it and stretching it, angling its point. And this isn't a hard edge triangle, this is kind of a softer triangle. So then I can warp it. Right click within the transform box. Curve it around. And this is just for that kind of gold trim. And then I need the same shape, Command J. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit more gold. Then I do Command J to duplicate it, and then I just shrink it. And I'm going to do the, the red, the deep, deep red. This I can warp and stretch inside the gold trim of the sleeve. Pull it down. Remember the, the ermine is going to cover it all up anyway. I want to cover enough ground with it. Now I get to pick its color. And then I can see what I've got. Remember these colors can always be adjusted and altered later. I'm just trying to get the main shapes in there. Let's see. I'm going to use Same color I used for the top of the head, for the hair. Duplicate that, move it up to the top. Move it down, whoops. Command T. Command T also just lets you move the shape, which is really nice. Warp it. <laughs> Yeah, it's too complicated. I'm just going to do the shoulder with that. Instead, I'm just going to do a new shape. It's that color, and delete the other one. So sometimes it's helpful to start from a duplicate. In fact, I don't even think I want an ellipse. I think I just want a rectangle. And I can soften that with warp. Because what I really need are the edges of her neckline. So then Command T, warp. Let's get this edge correct. All the way down. And you want the biggest basic shape that 